Hello, this is Ellen from The Make Room and today I'm going to show you how to make uh, Roman blinds. So first of all I'm going to sh get the fabric and the uh, interlining and the lining. Um, these particular blinds I'm using blackout lining. Uh, I do advise that you interline Roman blinds, it just gives a better weight, a little bit of more, more opaqueness at the window and uh, makes the whole finish much nicer and actually easier to make because most of the Roman blind is made by hand and the interlining helps you with the hand sewing really. So that's the weight of interlining that I'm using is quite a light weight. Um, if you buy interlining, um, this is a synthetic one, you can get all sorts of different ones but probably a synthetic one is, is good because it's washable should you want to wash your blind at a later stage. Um, and you don't want too heavy a weight for Roman blinds, you just want a, um, a light weight. And if you ask in the shop, they'll help you. Uh, or even on sites, they tend to recommend it for different things. There'll be lining that's suitable for Roman blinds, linings that's suitable for curtains. Um, it comes in 140 wide, just like lining. And remember, you can turn this around. So if your blind is much longer than it is wide, you can actually cut it the other way around. You don't need to cut it vertically uh, and you can save uh, fabric by doing that. I'm making two blinds today. Um, one is 113 long and 129 wide and the other one is 82 wide by 96.5 long. So for the amount of length that you need, you need to add on at least 15 centimetres to the finish length, uh, maybe 20 if you just want to round it up. The minimum that you can get away with is probably 10 centimetres, but I, I think as a general rule allow at least 15. So if I'm going to cut a blind that is 129 wide, obviously it's best if I cut the, the, the width of the blind this way because this is 140 wide. So I'm going to go this way for the length. So 113 plus 15 centimetres will be 128. So I'm going to cut a length of 130, round it up to 130. So the first thing to do, just like we do with fabric, is just to square up the bottom edge. So keep one edge of your interlining on the edge of the table and all the way down. And then you can just run your scissors along the other edge of the table to make that a true right angle. You don't want to be starting with a uneven uh, line at the bottom. So you just want to start with getting that straight. You can always use a proper set square and draw a line if you like. But a table is just as easy. So then I'm just going to measure up 130 centimetres from that point. You can use a steel rule or a cloth tape measure put one at the edge of the fabric and just measure up 130. If it's longer than your table, just measure up to a metre and put a line in. Probably four pins across the width of the fabric is ample. So I'm just going to mark a metre because it's I can't do 130 in one go. So I'm just doing it from the very edge of the fabric up to a metre exactly, and you pin in. I've got four pins going across my fabric. And then just um, pull the fabric forward evenly to get the 30. You can see that you've been consistent, so you know, by just looking at your pens, that you didn't measure one wrong. Now I'm going to measure 30. I can use those pins actually, just move them up to 30. I'm now going to cut across on that pin line. Um, you could draw a line with a rule if you're not very good at following. You could put your tape measure next to it if that helps across the pins like that. 
to help you cut, but I'm just going to use my eye following the line of the pens. first blind. Now you might want to label that, say blind A if you're doing two, more than one blind and you're going to get them mixed up. And then the next blind is 96.5 uh, actually when it's finished. So if I add on 10 or 15 centimetres to that I'm just going to add on, well, I'll add on 15, so that's uh, 106, 111.5. So I'm just going to round it up to 115. And again, I'm just putting a pin line in. You can do that directly onto the fabric because uh, it's not too, the table's big enough for that. piece on the table I might as well cut the width for this. So the width of my blind is 82 and I want to allow five uh, centimetres uh, for the fabric. I need to allow five centimetres either side but for the interlining technically I don't because the interlining is not going to go into the um, edges of the blind because we don't want that thickness. We do that in curtains but not in blinds. But because I want to cut it when I'm actually on the blind, I'm going to allow extra now and then the rest will get cut off when we fold it over, we'll get an exact line. So I'm just going to cut it the same as I would the fabric to start with, which is five centimetres wider either side, which is two inches than the finish width. So if the finish width is 82, I'm going to cut it to 92 across. So we've got a straight edge because this is the sort of finished edge of the interlining. So again, I'm just going to use my tape measure to measure across 92 and put a pin line in. Now, you can use a steel rule and cut it straight away if you like. So if you've got a steel rule and you put it on the edge of your table like that and you lock it off, you can actually cut 292 as you go along. So obviously my fabric is on the edge of the table, so I can just move that up and just cut it directly. You can use whichever method that you find easiest. And do that all the way to the top. This is my piece. This is just spare, so I'm just going to discard that for a minute so I don't get confused. And that's my actual blind. So now I'm going to get the other piece and just cut it widthwise. And this blind is 129 finished, so I'm going to cut it to 139 or 140. But actually, thinking about it, the fabric is already 140 wide, so actually. I don't really need to cut anything off this, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now the th next thing we're going to do is cut the lining, but you have to cut the lining to allow for the rod pockets. So I'm going to show you my diagram. We always start with diagrams with all our measurements on. So as you can see, I've got the, the width of my blind, the length of my finished blind. I've put which side it's going to be strung to, and then I've calculated my pleats. Um, and how many there'll be. Um, I've done a separate video on how to do this all, so uh, look at that one first if you're not sure how to do that. Um, I've also put that it's inside the recess uh, because it's very important if you're inside the recess of a window that you allow one centimetre clearance overall so that the blind can go easily up and down. Obviously if it's on the outside of the recess that's not quite so important. So this measurement is one centimetre left and less than the extremity 
of the recess. So I've calculated that I need one, two, three, four rods in each blind actually, one, two, three, four. And every time you have a rod, you are gonna need four centimeters to make that pocket. So I'm just gonna write four next to each of those rod lines. So if the length of my blind is 113, again, I need to allow 15, 20 centimeters extra, or minimum of 10 if you're short of fabric, in addition to that. So if I added on 15, that would be uh, 130, 128, but I'm going to call it 130. But I also need to add on for the pocket. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to 16. So you want 130 plus 16. You, I actually need lining that measures in its length of 146. So that's the length of the blind plus the extra for the turnings top and bottom and a bit of leeway and the rod pockets, four rod pockets. So I'm going to cut my length of lining to 146. The width of my lining will be 129. Now technically you don't need um, the five centimetres either side, uh, but you can cut, cut it to the same if it's easier and then cut that off when you're making the blind. Um, technically you're only going to need uh, maybe three centimetres because it's going to come uh, like one or two centimetres in from the edge, a minimum one, so maybe you'd need four centimetre turning either side. You don't want your lining to be, um, the turnings to be deeper than your fabric because if you do see the, 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 light, the blind when it's pulled down, you don't want to see all different levels of uh, uh, turnings inside so we try to keep them all at the same obviously this is blackout so nothing's going to show th through it anyway um, I'm just going to cut it to the same as my um, interlining and my fabric I'm going to keep it all the same and then I'm going to show you how to trim it off as we go when we make the blind so I'm going to cut it to 146 long and across wise I'm just going to add on the 10 centimeters five each side and I'm going to cut it to 140 and actually this is 140 because it's that's the standard width of uh, curtain lining and fabric and interlining so I don't need to do anything to this piece but with this lower one I will so I'll calculate this lower one so each one of those pockets is going to be four so it's going to be 16 again I've got 96.5 add on 15 which is 111.5 call it 112 so that's eight, so that's one, two, eight, maybe cut it to one thirty if you want to be um, just an easier figure. Um, now actually, because that's one thirty that way and it's only eighty two across, what we could do is actually use the width of the lining for that length, and we would save on lining that way. It doesn't really make any difference with the lining, obviously with the fabric, you can't always do that if it's got a pattern, but with the linings and interlinings you can. So actually all I'd need to do is turn it around so that actually the length that I'm going to do is 82 plus say 15, it should be 97. So maybe if I cut a metre that way I could turn it around and I would have enough to uh, do my pockets switching around. Which is obviously less than cutting 1 metre 30 that way and having a, a wastage. But don't worry, if you've bought enough fabric and you want to cut it all the same way, then uh, you're going to have off cuts either way, so don't worry about it. Obviously, I'm working from one continuous roll, so if I can save a little bit on the roll, I will. So I'm going to cut those two now in exactly the same method that I cut my interlining, just measuring, getting a square edge first of all on the table, and then measuring from the edge in to what I want and cutting my two pieces for my blinds. So I've cut my linings uh, and now I'm going to cut the actual fabric. Now this is a patterned fabric um, so first of all I need to centralise the pattern on each blind. So find the centre of your fabric and put a pin in. So just measure the width and find the central point. And then you've got to decide whether you want the pattern of the fabric to be a whole pattern at the top of the blind or at the bottom of the blind. With curtains, often it's 
it's at the bottom because the top has the heading tape which is all gathered and you don't notice it so much but with a blind the thing that you will see most is when it's pulled up will be that top pleat so generally speaking we make it the top of the blind where there'll be a whole pattern or a whole in this case a whole rose uh, a group of roses but say you had a really long blind that was very high and actually you know you're going to have it down more often than not you could do it from the other way but generally speaking with a roman blind it would be the top that you want the pull pattern so i'm looking at my fabric and how the pattern repeats itself i'm going to decide where i want the top of my blind to finish and so you want the top to not go through a well not through the middle of a rose because that would really stick out and i want to get a whole group of roses on my my top pleat now my top pleat is um the full pleat is 24 centimetres, um, so the actual, uh, when it's pleated up, is only going to be um, 12, but we do have a little bit extra to house the cassette at the top, and that's normally 5 centimetres, so actually, when it's folded up, it's going to be 17 centimetres, that top pleat. Um, so I could actually look at what I can get into 17 centimetres of these uh, whole flowers and then that might help me decide where I'm going to finish my blind and actually this rose here uh, it's actually one of these here is at the top of the blind and I can get this one in as well so I'm probably going to go across the top of that so I get these whole roses in plus this extra one um, so I'm going to mark I'm going to mark that where I want the top of my blind to be now obviously if you haven't allowed any extra at all to what you needed, you may not be able to do this. You do need a little bit of wiggle room when you've got a pattern to centralise and uh, across and vertically. Um, so, you know, but it, it may be just worth looking and measuring to see if you have got a bit of wiggle room to do that. So I'm just going to put a pin in where I'm going to put the top of my blind, which is going to be across here, I think. So it's going to be going across this one here. So I'll get this whole rose in. Yeah, I think that's a good one. 17. Yeah. So I've done it near the top of the fabric. You can't really see, but if I show you, here's the top of the fabric. And I've put my pin in here. So that's so I'm actually going to waste a bit of that. I will need some extra on top of that because that's actually going to be the top of the blind and then I've got my whole rows here for the first pleat. So I'm going to add on probably uh, 10 centimetres here extra to that pin line before to cut. So I'm not really wasting a terrible amount, only about 10 centimetres. But at the moment I'm just putting a pin in. All I'm going to measure down from that point to the finish length of the blind which is going to be 113 so from that pin that I've marked and that's going to be where my blind finishes so it's kind of quite nice to see if that's falling in a nice place if it isn't if it's cutting right through the middle of the rose you might be able to go to the next flower and try that one this one's actually not too bad. It's going to sort of get this whole flower in here at the bottom. I might just move it down just a fraction to about there and adjust it accordingly at the top because I can get away with that just so it gets this whole flower in at the base there. So I'm going to go back up and mark one one through. Just check that that's still okay with my top of my blind. And yes, it is. I'm still getting that whole rose in. Kind of worked out where my blind's going to be on the fabric. And then you're going to look at the width of your blind, halve it, so this is my finish width is 129, and then measure equal distances from the centre so that you're centralising the pattern. Now my blind is 129, so it will be 50, 65, 64 and a half uh, either side. So from that central pin, I'm just going to measure across 64 and a half and put a pin in. 
and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So now I've kind of got my, my actual blind blot, plotted out, the actual finished size of the blind, but obviously I've got to add on seam allowances. So either side you will have five centimetres for turnings in at the sides. And at the, at the top you're going to allow about 10, 5 or 10 centimetres. And at the bottom you need at least 10 um, because you're going to have a 2x2 um, a two two inch or 5x5 five five centimetre folded hem here that's going to have a weighted bar in it. So you need 10 centimetres at the bottom, maybe 10 or 15 at the top, and 5 each side. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start by um, plotting my line that's going to be 10 centimetres above my top pin and I'm going to cut across there in a straight line. Obviously you can use the pattern now to get a straight line so if you measure up the amount that you want for the turnings you'll see where it is on the pattern and you can follow it across the the fabric and you can find the same place on the pattern right the way across so that you get a perfectly straight line. Otherwise you're going to need to use the edge of the table like we did when we cut or a set square to draw a straight line if you've got plain fabric, whichever method that you want. But you do want it to be at a right angle to the side. Everything has got to be very true and very precise in blind making. So I'm going to plot those out and cut them now, starting with the top one. So I'm just going to add on the 10 and then just see where that comes in my pattern and just cut across. Just a word about uh, the pattern fabric. I have already um, checked with my client, because this, is, uh, this isn't for me, this blind, which way up she wanted the fabric to be, because sometimes fabrics can go either way, and it's important that you put it the way, if it's not for you, that your customer thinks it should be. This is actually a velvet, so it does have a direction as well, you can feel it. Um, and unlike um, dress fabric, which we always, velvet dress fabric, which we turn upside down in order to get the richness of the colour, this one is actually going down, the uh, smooth way is going down. Uh, but it hasn't got that sort of two-tone velvet look, it's just more about the, uh, the look of the velvet. Okay, so I can see that where my line is, is actually, it's going to be, um, my top line is actually a, above this, dominant uh, flower here. So I'm going to cut across, I can see the line, I've just got a straight line at the top to start with. I'm just going to go to the other side and cut across that. So I'll pull the fabric down now, find my lower pin. Here's my lower pin. I'm just finding where that pattern is uh, over here, so I can just plot it in the same place. So it's just above there, just below that leaf. So that's there. And then I'm just going to use my tape measure along those two pins. Just put another pin in. And then I can look at the pattern over here and match it again with the pin just to make sure I'm on the same line. Put my pins, take measure across. Then you could use a steel wool for this. Then I'm going to add on that 10 centimetres for my hem. So I'm just going to. Add on the 10, those pins, again you could just use your steel rule and cut straight across, or you could just put your tape measure on 10 centimetres below that pin line and you just cut.
So that's the length of the first line done. Now we're going to look at the width. Now my two pins are actually very near the edge because actually the finished blind is 130 and this is 140 wide fabric. So actually I think I'm just going to leave it because it's just over two inches either side but otherwise you would leave two inches to your plotted line of where you want your finished line to be on either side which is five centimetres. Um, when we're, when we're dressmaking, we always cut uh, salvages off because they can shrink when you wash them. Um, but as people don't generally wash blinds, if anything, they will dry clean them. It's not normally an issue. If you do want to wash your blind and you can afford to cut the salvage off, then do. If not, you can just clip into it at, uh, in diagonal clips, going down like that. And it will, if it's, you did wash it, it has room to uh, shrink and stretch out because it's normally the salvage that shrinks and not the fabric and it sort of pulls the, the blind up. So uh, that's a little tip. In curtain making we do that a lot because we leave salvages in and we clip diagonal clips all the way up the salvage in the seams to prevent the fabric from shrinking should they be washed. So I've now got my piece of fabric ready and I'm leaving these pins in because they're good reminders of where the top and the bottom and the sides are for me um, and now I'm going to do the same for the smaller blind. Now for the first cut for the next uh, blind it's really useful if you think about it you want your you want both blinds to have this pattern exactly the same at the top um, so a really useful thing is just to lay your original piece that you've cut on your uh, remaining fabric and find where the pattern matches across so you're you know you can see where the cut is and that's creating a complete pattern that is the wastage and that's because of the pattern repeat because if i go to the next one i haven't got enough above i need about 15 10 15 centimeters here and i've only got like three or four so i had to go down to the next repeat and this is what happens when you've got a pattern you have some wastage in order to match each uh, cup drop that you need for curtains or blinds but if you lay it on on top you can exactly match the pattern all the way across so it's exact you can sort of see the bottom of that leaf make sure that it's all exact and then just cut across that and that saves a lot of time and that will be the top of your blind do make sure you've got enough length obviously the length of my blind is going to be 96 plus I need 15 20 centimeters so I'm going to need at least um, 115 roughly so I'm just going to check down that I have got that yes and I've got plenty before I cut just to be sure I'm just going to cut across so I know my top is the same as the other blind and also it's quite useful to mark the top of the blind, especially when you're working on plain fabric, because it's easy to turn it around and fabric can look different, uh, different ways up. And if you had two blinds and you had one upside down on a plain fabric, it could look a slightly different color. So at the top of each blind, I've just put a, a pin, two pins that are in a cross. And that's my way of recording that this is the top of the blind. I'm going to do that to this one as well. I'm just going to put a cross pin here and that reminds me that's the top. And you can do the same with the linings and the interlining if you like because even lining can look slightly different when you turn it around. I know that's not so important because it's on the, the window side but if you're a little bit OCD and you want to keep it all very the same then that's a good thing to do. And this one's much narrower, so I will have to centralise the pattern and uh, cut down the sides as well. So again, find the centre of your, your material, just measure across the whole width, find a central point. And this measures one for one. And that's um, 70 and a half is exactly halfway. So I'm going to put a pin in at 70 and a half. And then I'm going to look at the width of my blind, which is finished is 83. But I'm going to need five centimeters turning either side, so that will be 93. 
So I've got to measure 93 across. I need half of 93 that way and half of 93 that way. So that's 40 by 46 and a half either way. So I've put 46 and a half on my pin and then I'm just measuring it on the tape measure and putting a pin in. And I'll do the same on the other side. And that's allowed for, that's actually going to be the cut because I've allowed the five centimetres either side. Um, you might want to put a few pins in across, so find the centre point further up, find your 70 and a half and keep doing it so you've got two lines either side that you can cut down because it's not so easy. Um, when you've got the pattern is going the other way. You haven't really got a pattern to follow so much. You will have a little bit, but... Um, and the other way to do it is just work out what you're cutting from the edge. So I've got this pin in. This is what I'm going to be cutting off, which is actually 20, 24 centimetres. And I'll just check the other side. Yep, 24. So if I just cut 24 off of each side of this, that would be correct. Or I can keep measuring from the middle and get a pin line down, whichever you want to do. And that's going to be for the length of the blind. Now, I'm just going to measure the length of the blind now. Because if I can keep a piece that's not been cut through, I will. Because maybe you can make a cushion from it or something. Uh, so best not to sort of cut it all down and then find you've got all these odd bits. So the length of the blind is 96.5, finished, but I want my 10 centimetres at the bottom, which is now 106.5, and I want my 10, or 5 or 10 centimetres at the top, so 116.5. So if we said roughly 100 120, I'll just see what I've got here. I've got about 132 here, so I'm going to cut some off. So I'm going to, first of all, uh, mark the top of my blind again, like I did with the other one. And I can check on this one where that was. It should be 10 centimetres from the top. But I could look at the pattern and see where I put my pins. Um, we'll just measure down 10. If you've done your cut, so you know it's 10 centimetres from the top. I'm just going to mark across. It's actually quite useful to leave these pins in because they're all reminders of where all your um, folds are going to be. You don't have to. So that's the finished top of my blind. So I'm just going to measure down to find the actual, which is 96.5. I'm just going to put a pin there. This. And then I'm going to add on my 10 to that pin. And again, I should be able to follow this pattern across. I can see where I am in this little bunch of flowers. So I could put a pin here. Uh, there isn't one that size, but if I run my tape measure along those two pins, I should find a place in the middle that I can follow. So that leaf there, I'm going through here. And then when I get to these flowers, I'm going through the green bit, which is there. So that's my, my base cut line. Now actually the piece that was left wasn't very big. But I'm still going to leave it as one whole piece. I just cut across there. So always keep double checking before you cut. Make sure you've got your seam allowance at the top and the bottom. Don't just measure once and just think, oh yeah, that's fine. Because um, once you've cut it, that's it. So now I'm going to cut up the sides. Um, 
just remind myself what I'm cutting off, which is 24. And I'm just going to check again between those two pins that I have got. 83 plus 10 centimetres. Yeah, I've got 93. So just to reassure myself before I cut it off, I'm going to cut off 24 on either side. So I'm just going to put 24 here and cut towards my edge of my tape measure. Again, you can use the steel wool, find that easier. Now you can always just fold that over, keeping the salvages together, and you'll have a line to follow. And all the way to the top. Now my cross pins are over there, so I'm just going to move them in so that they stay at the top of the blind. I'm just going to keep that on the edge there. this on and cut along this so you measuring it as long as you get the salvages really matched up There we are, we've got all our pieces cut now. And I've got a cross pin at the top, so I know that's the top of the blind. And this is my spare. 